just like the Blue Jays, no home runs on this pod. We're working station to station. Dustin, uh, back after a quick two-game wildcard series in which the Jays uh, were swept out of the playoffs. And Dustin, uh, this team is what we thought they were. Yeah, <laughs> they are what they what we thought they were. That's right, I think. Uh, we were saying before we jumped on here, this is, I mean, this is almost poetic in terms of this is exactly how the season went to a certain degree. And this is, I mean, a, a pretty emblematic 2023 Blue Jays uh, postseason run. Well, we can uh, kind of talk about these games uh, and kind of how we felt about how they were emblematic of the 2023 season. But let's actually talk about the games themselves a little bit of some key moments. Game number one, so the Jays do lose this game three to one. Our key moments in this one uh, on the twin side of things, Royce Lewis, who has never played in the Major League playoffs before, in his first two at bats in uh, in these playoffs, hits a two home uh, two excuse me a two run home run in the bottom of the first. So the Jays are pretty much immediately behind in this game. And then he follows it up with another solo home run. And Dustin, you know, Kevin Gosman, our number one starter, I never had any doubts about, you know, he should have started this game, but he did seem to make some mistakes in both of his at-bats against Royce Lewis. Yeah, I mean, due to the the early start of this game, I was driving home and, you know, just listening to it, and it just sounded like he was not... Uh, he was not effective. He was not locating, you know, the fact that this was a two-run home run was due to, you know, a walk he gave up. And, uh, you know, he gave up a few more later on as well. It's just, it was not um, the classic Kevin Gosman that we've seen. No, it definitely wasn't. And in terms of, like, the two-run home run, it was an inside a 97 mile an hour fastball that uh, Royce Lewis was able to pull into the left field stands. I didn't think that was too bad of a pitch, but the solo home run was basically middle, middle 94 miles an hour. uh, And he just teed off uh, and it was uh, kind of right center field. So a bit of an opposite field shot. So Kevin Gosman, you know, we, we really wanted him to start, in the playoffs and uh, he really just did not have his best stuff saying that the Minnesota twins uh, have kind of the vex on him a little bit. They do seem to uh, all their, all their hitters seem to be, you know, any sort of low pitch they're just laying off because on on the likelihood that it is a, um, you know, a splitter, they uh, really didn't let themselves get fooled by that particular pitch. And, you know, they let him, come to them with fastballs and uh, really they had one batter that punished them. They've been doing that all year against him, or at least the, the few times that they've seen him. Um, and occasionally we see this with him, like whether or not they've had some kind of tell on him or if they just kind of have the, the approach that works against Kevin Gosman. Well, I don't think there's any tell. I just think they're like, you know what? If if it's a low strike, just let it go. Because, you know, he, he's a two-pitch pitcher, and the chances of it being a splitter are pretty good. So just let that one go and let him come up in the zone. And right. uh, more splitters over the plate and fastballs. And they seemed uh, – they didn't – well, they scored three runs on two swings. So it's not like they were uh, exceptional at the plate. But they did enough in this game. Well, that, that's it. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to blame Cosman too much. I mean, it's playoffs, guys. We need to score more than one run in in the nine innings here. Uh, we needed more than one run to win this game. Whether or not, you know, Gosman pitched a gem, you know, like if, if he only gives up one run off a, a couple kind of weak balls or something, you know, they got if the Twins got lucky... Uh, you know, we needed to score two to win. So uh, I'm not going to blame him too much, although he he did kind of um, shit the bed a little <laughs> a little bit. I mean, 
it's funny. The Blue Jays have kind of a history of that, of their star aces not doing very well in their playoff performances. I mean, we've seen it with uh, David Price, for example. Manoa um, last year. Sorry, say that again? Uh, Manoa last year. Yeah, Manoa. Um, Robbie Ray had a really bad playoff outing. So uh, it seems like just uh, some kind of Blue Jays ace playoff curse. Well, let's talk about some key moments for the Jays in this game. Uh, so really, uh, if you look at both games, kind of the middle of the game is kind of where this game is kind of won and really lost uh, in the end of it. But top four, um, we have Bo on second base following a single and Alejandro Kirk, who actually had uh, a pretty good playoffs, I thought. Uh, he, he got hit by a pitch. And really the key moment following this is uh, Kevin Kiermeyer's at the plate and he hits this kind of bouncing infield single towards third. Uh, the third baseman basically misses it. It, uh, go, it goes by him, goes to Carlos Correa at short. Now this is an error on the, uh, the third baseman's part, but Bo Bichette, who is at second, uh, decides he's going to uh, round third and try to score on this, and he is thrown out on this play. Um, yeah, I'm curious. Actually, I don't think we've talked about this all, all that much outside of the pod, so I'm, I am curious what you think about this. I mean, at first I was like, you know, what are you doing there? You you, you can't do that. But after rewatching the play, you know, it, it required a really almost a perfect throw. Carlos Correos is a... Uh, you know, platinum Glover, and uh, he made you know a perfect recovery throw on this ball to to gun down Bo. Uh, almost, you know, I, I probably nine times out of ten, this is a this is a run score. So uh, I don't blame Bo for going here. He's being aggressive. He's trying to score in a low run game. Um, yeah, I'm not. I, I didn't have after thinking about it. I didn't have a problem. What did you think? Well, I think we need to note off the top of this that Louis Rivera actually put up a stop sign. Now, I don't know if that is, uh, you know, I don't think we can blame Bo for running through the stop sign, right? It's uh, it's a really quick play. This isn't a ball uh, coming from the outfield, uh, but Louis Rivera does throw up a stop sign. Bo runs through it. And I believe one of the Sportsnet uh, co- uh, analysts, like, to be honest, I can't remember which one. Basically, said they they thought it was fifty fifty, and I, I would tend to agree with that. It, uh, you know, you got to be aggressive sometimes to score runs. And as you said, the throw by Correa, like he's off balance. He's basically throwing that ball from like a foot off the ground. So he's like he's essentially like submarining it towards and the plate. Bare, he barehand it. Yeah, yeah, he so- barehands it, submarines it. And and makes a perfect throw, throwing out Bo. Like, there's so many other outcomes that can happen. That ball can skip away. You know, the throw's not quite as good. I, yeah, the catcher you know smothers what? it pretty well there. So like that's yeah. a good play on the catcher there to to make the the catch and and the tag. So yeah, yeah. Well, Minnesota, like you know, we'll see in these two uh, two games. Minnesota did not really make any mistakes in terms of defensively. And, and when they did on this particular play, they were able to make up with it with an incredible play. Right. Yeah. The blue Jays just weren't able to capitalize on the mistakes. I mean, we, we saw, you see in the, in the first inning, the first, you know, batter, you know, George Springer, you know, uh, gets on base with an error and, um, and he, he's not able to score. We're not able to bring him around, not able to capitalize on those mistakes and that happened throughout the series so the next uh key moment in this game comes in the top of the six and uh another similar uh, circumstance where we have uh bow on second base and kevin kiermeyer actually hits an rbi single in this case bow does score so the game's now two to one you know it looks like the jays are crawling back and Really, you kind of felt this, you know, in both these games, it was like, they, you know, they were they were right there, but just couldn't really kind of convert when it when it counted. And following uh, this single, 
Uh, Louis Varlin comes into the game for the Twins, and he's pitching to Matt Chapman. And poor Matt Chapman, you know, I, I haven't felt oh bad God. for him much of the year, but poor Matt Chapman hits a ball 401 feet to the center field wall. If that, you know, and makes probably the longest out in the series. Uh, if that ball is hit maybe three feet more, it's off the wall, or or it could even be gone. I, I I'm not really sure where the uh, the top of the fence or like the home run line is there, but that breaks that game open. Probably the lead, the the Jays probably take the lead in that, but it's uh it's a third out of the inning. Twins get out of that, and nothing really happens the rest of the game, and the Twins go on to win three to one. Yeah, I mean, like you said, it just felt like the 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 baseball gods or baseball luck dragon or whatever you want to say it was on the twin side i mean uh you know just those little you know another universe the blue jays are winning you know this game four to three you know if if they're able to a few bounces go the right way um you know that ball you know Bo scores there and they continue that inning who knows what happens you know the the you could quiet the stadium down and now the the team feels a different way so it's yeah it's such a shame it just felt like all the momentum was on the twin side and they just they just kept it rolling and kept pushing that momentum let's jump into game number 2 which is the deciding game of the series and the jays end up losing this 2 to nothing but we do have lots of talking points in this one. And again, the middle of the game uh, really is kind of where this one is decided. The I guess the crucial moments. And uh, the key moments essentially for the Blue Jays first on the bottom of the fourth inning. Uh, Jose Barrios, you know, he started this game, was absolutely cooking uh, through three innings and into the fourth. Uh, and he ends up walking Royce Lewis to start that particular inning. Mm. And John Schneider hops out of the dugout and replaces him with Yusei Kikuchi. Now, this wasn't surprising in terms... If you were watching it on TV, it wasn't surprising because they, they were constantly showing Kikuchi warming up in the bullpen, essentially warming up with you know, I guess that what they would say is warming up with purpose. So it wasn't like he was just out there throwing. And it seemed like John Schneider was waiting for the moment to do this. And he decides to make this move in the bottom of the fourth. Uh, Kikuchi comes in. Uh, the bases uh, end up uh, loaded. Uh, there's an infield single. Kikuchi walks a guy. Probably not that surprising given who we're talking about. And the Twins eventually score two runs in that inning and lead the game two to nothing. Uh, I think the outrage in Blue Jays nation, (laughs) you know, I I think it was pretty much everywhere. People were wondering like, why, like what is going on? Why is this happening? And, you know, really I I felt pretty much similar. Uh, It it seemed to be a a bit of a, a head scratching decision, Dustin. It's definitely been a focal point for, you know, the outrage and the disappointment of this series and this team uh, for a lot of reasons. One, a lot of people want to hate on Schneider. So anybody who's, you know, on the fire Schneider camp, you know, can point to this and say he's an idiot. And you know what, this is an idiot move. And, you know, I have no doubt that, um, uh, you know, a, a, a different manager wouldn't have made it. I think, However, <laughs> you, we didn't score any runs. Nine hits, no runs. So this wasn't the deciding factor of the game. Those of us, um, well, not those of, us, those of us, but those fans that are want to hate the, the let's say, the, the suits, the guys upstairs, the analytics the guys, the nerds, you know, Rod Atkins and Shapiro, you know, they're going to say, well... You know, they're going to point to the fact that, well, this is probably a planned move and this was, you know, driven by all those nerd stats and all this and, you know, it's their fault, right? 
and then you know there are those of those of us who want to you know blame the players and blame the Kikuchi and everybody so everybody's got somebody they can point to uh, at in this moment that they can blame and I think you know like I said to me this team's pitching is like elite level and I, I keeping this keeping the twins to on you know in these two games um what five runs limiting them to five runs in two games i i i tell you any day if you told me yeah we're going to limit them to five runs in the first two games i'd be like perfect awesome but the fact is like we scored one run in nine in 18 innings it's like you you can't win a game like that so i, I i'm not going to be you know uh, on that bandwagon in terms of like calling this move the move that cost them the series or anything but i'm not going to say that it was a smart move obviously it was dumb well Barrios's line in this game 47 pitches uh 3 innings pitch five strikeouts three hits one earned run and one walk uh dustin i can see this move being made maybe on like the third time through the order that's you know traditionally when uh starting pitchers begin to falter uh but like jose barrios you know i I don't know if his stat line really shows that but if you're watching that game like he was he was on fire like he 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 he, you know even though before that yeah he had probably what it looks like a hit pretty much each inning but he he actually didn't look like he was being threatened at all and i i I I don't like the move. Okay, I don't I don't like the move, and I'm not going to I'm not going to support it. Could I see it later? Yes, but yeah, it seems it seems like sixth, this was also no planned. Problem. Yeah, if this was in the sixth, I'd probably give you the fifth too, depending on where they are in the order. But um, it seemed like this was planned. Um, now, one of the things they kind of discussed in the broadcast was, you know, was this kind of a move to kind of ferret out? some of the um the twins hitters like force you know because generally you know you're gonna you're gonna start pinch hitting you know like you know you're gonna get some righties basically you're gonna get some lefties out of the game and a lot of the um the twins strong hitters happen to be lefties and so it seems like that may have been a play to do this and at the end of the day you know they didn't score so it doesn't matter so right exactly but just just to, on that point, why not bring in Hennessy Cabrera, right? Why not bring somebody who's a bullpen arm, who's used to coming in with a guy on first, who's used to, you know, getting ready. He was up, he was warming up the inning before, I believe. Like, I, I don't understand bringing in Kikuchi, like, in that moment. Have Kikuchi ready. That's why he was there. The Twins are lefty heavy. That's That's a great plan. But, you know, bring him in in the seventh or, you know, with a clean inning. If 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 it ends up happening like Barrios gets out there in the sixth or in the fifth and then you bring Henry Cabrera in the sixth, he gets a couple outs and now those lefties are up, you know, to lead off the seventh. Perfect time to bring in Kikuchi. Kikuchi can give you those two innings, maybe an inning and a half. And then you're in the eighth, ninth, and you got you know, your your um, back of the bullpen guys to to close it out. It just it seemed like it was like this plan that they had that was like okay, when we're in the middle of the game after a little while and these lefty middle of the order bats are up, we're gonna bring in Kikuchi. All right, good good plan, good plan. And then nobody like thought of like. Let's look at the way that the game is going. Let's look at how Barrios is pitching. Let's look at what's happening in terms of like <clears throat> who's on base and is Kikuchi, you know, you know, built, you know, to come in in that spot. Like he's not a reliever. I don't know. It just it just made no sense on so many levels. Like you say, like I can buy it later in the inning after three times through. You know, that's a great plan, but man, I don't know. I I, I just don't have the words. But like you said, yeah, like 
the bats aren't hitting. There's nine hits. Nine hits, zero runs. It's like, we can't buy a run. It's insane. Well, I think I think you're right in terms of, you know, if you're going to bring a lefty in to, for situational thing, you know, I think there's Yanis Cabrera. There's, you know, other pitchers as well. I, I, I don't know, like, do you think Schneider was behind this or do you think there was someone else that was like, Hey, I got this idea, right? Like, do you know what I mean? Or was, or was this like, is this the khakis saying, Hey, you know, you're going to put Kikuchi in this game and then he's just got to go out and execute when he's got to do it. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I think, uh, Schneider's falling on us. I, if I had to put my money down, I would say, yeah, this is a, a khaki move. Let's say, this is a uh, somebody in the analytics or somebody like Ross Atkins said, this is the plan for this game. We're going to throw Barrios for four innings. Then we're going to throw Kikuchi for five and six, you know, then or whatever, you know, whenever these lefties are coming up in the fifth, that's when you bring in Kikuchi, I, you know. Uh, so Which I, I completely disagree with. Those- like I, I completely disagree with that. Like Ross Atkins, his role, like it, it, you know, we're we're speculating a little bit, obviously, but Ross Atkins' role is not to not to determine, you know, what pitchers are going to come in or who we're going to use. Ross Ross Atkins' role is to like build a, build a team, essentially, right? Well, like Shapiro Shapiro is that he does that. No, but I, are you disagreeing I, with that? Are you disagreeing I, with me that that could happen or that? that no, no, no. I, I'm not disagreeing. I'm should. saying that if I, I don't think that should happen. Like that's right. That, yeah, he's over. No, he's over. If if that is the case, right now, it could be someone in the analytics department that says, "Hey, you know, he, you know, comes, you know, he comes to Schneider and the coaching staff with some kind of uh, plan he, he's come up with." But if if this is Ross Atkins and you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it is or not. That That's completely overstepping his his responsibilities, right? Like, that's not it's not a general manager's role to say, I want you to use these pitchers in this game. Like, if, if I'm a manager or, like, it, like it piss off, right? Like, I'm the manager. I, I'm going to decide what happens here. And you know what? If, if the manager's not allowed to do that, then, you know. Like, and the yeah. other thing, the only thing that I think ties in to this is John Schneider is like, he's an organization guy. So like, I don't think he's a rock the boat guy, or at least not right. in his current career. Uh, I could see someone, you know, from outside, you know, you know, Atkins comes to him or whoever comes to him and he's, and he says, yeah, I'll consider that. And I'll make a decision. Yeah, John at the time. He's not, not, yeah. But it, I, I don't it, think, it, I, I don't know. It doesn't really come up, but but like, I would like to know. I'd love to know what Don Mattingly has to say about this. And and you know what? If Don Mattingly leaves in this off season, which is very possible, maybe we might hear some more on this. Maybe we not. He's a, he's a professional guy, so maybe we won't hear anything more on it. But it it was completely maddening at the time. Um, you know, as I said, I I you know playoffs. So you know, you're going to treat starting pitchers differently. I uh, I do think though. Um, if you look at Barrios's reaction, like I, I don't think this is very surprising, right? If no. it, this didn't come from left field at all, you know, no pun intended. Uh, he he knew at some point he was going to get the hook, and it came in 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 the bottom of the fourth inning. Yeah, I, I mean, I think some of the other players were surprised, and some of the quotes from Merrifield, Bo, Vladdy, all indicated such um yeah i mean uh, just to jump back to your point about you know what what should be the the role of the general manager i think i think there's some role that they can kind of put their two cents in on what they think is gonna should happen and you know they're they're helping build the roster they're making those kind of points and I, i you know i think it should the way it should work out is Hey John, this is what I think we should do. This is what I think would work out. But it should be up to John to say in the moment to make those baseball decisions and to know your guys and to say, you know what, Barrios is is shoving right now. He's like, I'm not going to do this thing that we talked about. 
um, screw your analytics right now. This is a baseball game and I'm trying to win. But, you know, maybe John Schneider's, like you said, his, he's an org guy. He's just trying to keep his job. I mean, I'm sure he feels like he's managing on a knife's edge right now that he's got to, he's going to eat the loss and he is eating it to a certain degree. But I think there was some quotes from him that kind of indicated that this wasn't his, his move completely. Well, then I, that doesn't make me very happy to be honest. Like I, if he's going to, if a manager is going to make a decision, like I, it, it's gotta be their own decision. Right. And, um, I would, I, I don't know. I, it, in terms of the general manager, my, my opinion on this is they're they're there to build a team right and that's in terms of like game day kind of operations and lineups and how we're gonna you know do this who's gonna play who's who's got off days yes there, there's other info that obviously gets provided to you it but I, I don't can, but yeah, i don't i just don't board, that kind of thing but i just don't think it, i think it's really out of the general manager's um scope let's say to even, you know, really to even go to this length of, uh, of it. Like, you know, has Ross Atkins ever played like at any sort of level? I have no idea. I, I like, he does like, I, I'd have to, I I'd it. have to check after I, I, he doesn't come across as a guy who like, he seems more Alex Anthopoulos than John Schneider. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, no, I agree. And Alex Anthopoulos was like, he was like a mailroom guy basically starting out and he kind of worked right. his way through. And, but all right, let's, we're, we're still in the middle of this game and uh, there's still a lot more that happens in it in terms of key moments. Uh, and the next one comes in the very next half inning. And uh, we have a uh, George Springer single, Vladdy walks. Uh, following that, there is a wild pitch, which both runners move up to second and third. So arguably our best uh, batter is at the plate in Bo Bichette. And Vladimir Guerrero Jr. gets picked off at second base, Dustin. I, 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 I'm, I'm getting angry just even saying those words right now. <laughs> uh, I... I, I almost, honestly have zero words. This is, to me, this this is almost one of the last draws I have for Vladdy. You're, you're in a playoff game on second base. You're the trail runner. You're not even the lead. There's a guy on third. You're on second. Fucking stand on the base for all I care. Yeah. Like, how do you get picked off in that spot? Well, you got I, Boba shut up. Who's having an amazing at bat? Oh my yep. god! <laughs> that it it totally it totally killed. I you know that was, we're, we're that gonna was, talk about we're gonna talk about more uh, happenings in this game and opportunities the Jays had. But really, that that just snuffed it. Just snuffed out another good opportunity the Jays had to do some damage in the game. And again, we're not talking about. You know, he was the first out or the second out. No, the inning ended on the that play. Was over. That's yeah, the third what it out. Felt like? It felt a lot like that that um the crash in the outfield last like, year. Last year, yeah. Just in terms of like the gut wrenching like fuck, it's over kind of feeling. Uh that's I I kind of felt like like this was the opportunity, this was the inning, this was the you know, the at bat. I was standing there like on the edge of my seat. I couldn't sit down actually because I was like, Come on, Bo, this is hero time and then Oh he gets picked off. I'm like like it's just like absolutely crushing. Well, it's completely unacceptable. I would say it's completely unacceptable at pretty much any level. Uh I confirmed with some uh, old New Market Men's Baseball League <laughs> players that if this happened on the New Market Indians at the time, uh, oh man, there you would have you would have got it. You would have got it yeah, hard. You so you wouldn't, you'd that, be that's, hearing about it until the few, next guy made a mistake. <laughs> like yeah. exactly, you'd be bringing beers for two or three weeks, not <laughs> one. But exactly, um, it was, you know, it was totally maddening, and you know, part of. 
there's a part of me that feels for Vladimir Guerrero because I think he's really trying to be, you know, that straw that stirs the drink. But, and I think at times he has the ability, but I also think that he he's also the youngest player on this team. Like even when they when they had all the the Buffalo boys up on the raw, you know, on on the roster, Horowitz and you know, um, David Schneider and Ernie, like he was still the youngest player on this team. And you know, this is this is a very inexperienced move. I would, um, I didn't get a chance, but I, I'd love to go back and watch that inning leading up to that play. And I wonder if they were like testing him, like they, they tried and they like, Oh, let's see if, let's see if we can get his attention by, and they picked up on the fact that, Oh, he doesn't know that Carlos Correa is sneaking in behind. And there was something relayed to the catcher. They put a, yeah. they put a pickoff play on and well, you, seen, you know, have out you of the seen, inning have you go. Seen, have you seen the John boy breakdowns on plays here and there? No, I have not. Um, so it he, sounds like I should. So John Boy is like a, you know who they are, right? Yes, yes, so, I do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like talking baseball. So they he does the breakdowns where he kind of breaks down these kinds of plays in detail and talks about all the little things you might miss. Uh, I saw on Twitter just before we started recording that he broke this down. I had I didn't I just didn't have the guts to like watch it because I was just going to be oh, angry again. Yeah, exactly. So I'll have to watch it after this, but. Yeah, I think there. Oh, so you, yeah. so you, oh, so you, you didn't watch it. You didn't want to re-traumatize I yourself. I, yeah, exactly. I was like, I'm gonna avoid watching that because I know it's gonna make me mad. But oh. I have to watch it because I'm interested in exactly what you're talking about. Is it, like, is there some way that he could have known? Like, some way that they could have, like, I don't know, a smart baseball runner on second there kind of notices that they're looking at him and that they're sneaking behind him. Like, are you paying attention? Are you? I don't know. Well, people, some people are like, well, that's on the third base coach. And you know what? If this was the new market men's baseball league, you know, the third, the, the third base coach is getting hauled into kangaroo court as well. But 40, whatever, 40, 50,000 people aren't watching those games and cheering, whatever. The, right. I don't know. Like you have to have a, a professional player has to shoulder some responsibility. And he, he was just checked out. He fell asleep. Right. He was he's obviously ready to at any point, any any point of contact. He was he was going right. There's two outs, obviously. Right. And, you know, of course, he wants to score. And he forgot that he was on second. And, uh, you know, well, yeah, that's how it goes. So that was top of the fifth. We do have some some more happenings that I think were the kind of last bit of hope for the Jays in this game. And that's in the top of the sixth. Uh, the bases are actually loaded. And Mr. Matt Chapman is at the plate again. Oh, my God. And this one, so this one, I, this one I actually watched live. And he hits a liner down the left field line. And I was like, that's it. That's it. That's gonna, <laughs> That's clear. You know, if it doesn't clear the bases, it's probably getting That'll two runs, time, right? Yeah. Right, like you know, Alejandro Kirk is. I think he was uh, the middle of that sandwich. So maybe there's a runner that gets hung up on third, maybe. But it could have, it could very well have cleared the bases, and it is foul. So Rob told me today he go because I, I think I missed the replay, and he's like, no, it was, and I, it's foul. It was foul by a, a foot. I watched it again today. It may have been a foot. Like it was probably less than a foot. It was foul by. Yeah, it was um, close enough that it, it was yeah. so close and then you know okay you know he puts a good swing on the ball and and usually for most major league players and teams you know that that's that's an indication that he's on it right you know he's on it you know he's something good could happen here and yeah. i don't think it was the very next pitch i think it was maybe the second pitch after that mr matt chavin hits into a double play and the inning is over And that's as likely as last at bat as a Blue Jay. Um, well, I think he struck out in the ninth, didn't he? Oh, well, okay. Yeah. Either so way. like his his last major involvement, let's say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, give me some thoughts on this because it was just like, 
this this second game uh rob rob said to me today that you know he <laughs> he was getting so frustrated we were we went for a walk for coffee and he was getting just so hot under the collar it was amazing but this game was everything that this 2023 season had actually both games really were but really this game you know you had bad luck you had some bad base running bad base um, running you had some really good missed pitching, missed, op- missed opportunities. Base. So if we're going to talk Nine about missed hits, opportunities, <laughs> missed opportunities. So top of the first, two runners on, nothing. Top of the second, two runners on, nothing. Top of the fifth, two runners on, nothing. Top of the sixth, bases loaded, nothing. And in the ninth inning, they had a runner. So they even brought the the tying run to the plate in the ninth inning. And that's the thing about this series that, that, that that's so frustrating is that even after that that top of the six and you know if you go through the game you're like well nothing really happened after that but they still brought the tying run to the plate like one swing of the bat could have tied this but not in 2023 not with the blue jays like they just that's just not who they who they are and and were in and i did i said this i, I don't know if it was in the last episode uh, or maybe the prior one that this team is good enough to get into the playoffs by basically just you know the other the other teams kind of just take themselves out they win enough games and get in and this i dustin i would argue that this game was probably their first their only must win game of the year because if you go up to that point technically game one was not a must win they didn't need to win it game number two was a must win and even you know even even leading up to the um to the playoffs they lost on Saturday, and they made the playoffs by Seattle losing that night, <laughs> right? And then what do they yeah. follow? What do they follow it up on Sunday by losing again, right? So the first that this is the first must-win game of the entire year, and well, they they showed who they who they really are, who their true colors are. Yeah, I mean, what can you say? What can you say more than that? I mean, you you said it better than I could have. I mean. It, I don't know. Well, I, I, oh, going back to Vladimir Guerrero, right? Like, I, I sent you, I sent you a video today. I don't know if you watched it about the the confusing season that he had, and there, there's some, there's definitely more going on here. But you know, Vladimir Guerrero uh, in the Boston series pretty much wins that series for the Jays, right? And then in this series, yes, he he gets a double in the in game number one, and in fact, it was the, he had the only extra base hit in in two games. Okay, so let's let's give him some credit. But he then, in his first at bat, steps up to the plate and puts a swing on an outside like it was a pitch on right. It was low and outside, and he just like fly like a lazy fly out. It's like. Oh, it's just so frustrating watching him and this whole team. Like that beginning of the game. So we have George Springer. Sw- he swings at every pitch he saw. He didn't. There was no. He did not let a single pitch go by. Vladimir Guerrero. Is that right. Yeah. So this is the way. So if you if you go back and watch, I I I, I was I was trying to text you. I don't know if I sent it in time, but basically every single uh, every single Blue Jays batter leading up to Kevin Biggio. It swings at every pitch, right? George Springer swings at every pitch. Uh, Vladimir Guerrero swings at every pitch. Bo Bichette swings at every pitch. Kevin Biggio. So Kevin Biggio comes to the plate, all right? And for the then doesn't swing at any pitch, right? <laughs> he he waits. I think the first swing, I think the first swing at that at bat was, the, I think it was because like, he, he, took, he took the first three pitches. The first two were strikes, then it was a ball. And I think maybe he fouled. I think maybe the fourth or fifth pitch of that at bat, he fell off. He swung a couple times, yeah. So, like, are you guys are you guys trying to be aggressive? Are you guys trying to be patient? Like, what like what are you trying to do here, right? And it just you know, as you said, uh, in 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 our opener, like this game and this series is just emblematic of this 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 season as a whole, right? Like like I I don't know. Like I'm I I feel like I'm I'm getting worked up which i'm okay <laughs> with because I, I wanted to do, i wanted to get this off my chest but it just like i'm sitting there watching it and the thing is i actually don't think the jays played like that badly they no, just didn't they play didn't. they did they didn't and that's what's so maddening is 
they they just didn't they don't play complete games right they just don't right and you know they got guys that are maybe not the best hitters and you know Varsho seems to either hit a home run or he grounds out or he pops up those are the three outcomes for him Kiermaier you know he kind of came back after having a really good first half he kind of came back to the earth he's okay um you know he's, he's I think, decent, we, I think right? we need to but I think we need to do a deep dive maybe this off season on a, a few, like you, you know two or three players an episode or something and, and just go through like what do these guys need to do like Vladimir Guerrero like this guy needs to figure something out this off season like he needs to have an off season well that's better he, than okay. his, he needs to know. have an off season i and i'm going to hold my thoughts for another off season episode because i have a lot to say about Vladimir Guerrero and it's yeah, not yeah. all and, it's not and, all baseball related but he had this guy has to go into the off season and he you know what you want he if you want to take the next step um I'll be watching he, he, him in Dominican he does a lot of work. I'll be What's watching that? Him in Domini- I'll be watching him in Dominican League and see when, how he does there cuz like yeah, he needs to do some work this offseason, that's for sure. Yeah. Um and it's you know, I I have, I, had, I, have, I have a friend that went down for the game and you know he so I think it was like maybe noon, noon yesterday, he's like I booked a hotel. You know, I'm ready for game 3 and I was like, "Okay, I like your confidence, man." And I, I felt bad for him because, you know, this team – and he, he's a season ticket holder, so he, he's been to a lot of games this year. But um, just – this team just didn't show up when it counted, right? And, you know, like I think it was 18 runners stranded in two games. Amazing. Like, <laughs> like unbelievable, amazing, like mind-boggling – um, even watching that second game, I was like, okay, they're going to score because they, you know, as I said, the first, first and second inning, they have two runners in each inning. Right. And I bet you, if you looked at like the expected numbers, I bet you oh the, God, Blue Jays, go. the Blue Jays won this series. Like you just look at the expected on base or the expected runs or whatever. I bet you they won this series. Just judging by that, the number of hits, I think they out hit the twins. The number of base runners, the pitching that happened, like it's amazing that they lost these games. Well, but it, it's amazing, but it's also like exactly we're, we're, we're 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 reacting as we are because we're frustrated, right? But we're not surprised. No, not at all. There's nothing there's absolutely nothing surprising about the two games that we saw. We, you know, everybody was like, oh, you know, some timely hitting and, you know, they got the pitching and the defense and, you know, this team's, this team's set up and built for the playoffs. Yeah, I would mostly agree with that, except that you got to score some runs, right? And, you know, if we go back and and I don't want to do, I don't want to really get into this season too much, but going back to April, right? I remember it was a a great month, right? It was a great month. Mm -hmm. And the Jays, like, the Jays we're had so this, like, you were so excited. The Jays had this, like, hop in their step, right? They had this little, like, this bounce. Yeah. And, you know, they were, they were, you know, they every now and then they throw out a double steal. They were bunting for hits. Like, they were, they, this team was at, supposedly advertised as it was going to do, it was going to do everything. You know, it was going to hit home runs and score runs. But it was going to do small ball stuff, too. And then the month of May happened. May and, just... you know they shat themselves and but like everything went up everything went up in smoke it was almost like the only person that was allowed to bunt for a hit was dalton varsho right like you know we'll let you do it but we don't want anyone else you know we don't want anyone else trying this or anything it was i i don't know it was it was just mind-boggling like this team you know it it it, it when they stepped to the to the plate you know in the in the in the case of these games, they were they were stepping to the plate first in the first inning. No personality. This team does have not have any personality. Like you, you don't you don't know what that you're gonna get from them. And we we you know that's why we're frustrated because you know we we're like oh you know we got all, we got all these players on paper. It's a good team, right? And then it just does what it what it what it does, right? It it does what it did all 2023. 
Yeah, man. I, I mean, I I really don't have a whole lot of words without, I guess, going into a deeper sort of debrief on the season. Um, but I mean, yeah, this was this was good to get our, our thoughts off <laughs> off the chest. Uh, you know, it's such as the life of a Toronto Blue Jays fan, at least in recent times. Dustin, I'm going to ask you one one question. Before Sorry, you do, Atkins yep. was drafted in the 69th round of the 1994 Major League Baseball draft. Didn't sign, went to college. Okay. Then he was drafted in the 38th round, 95, with Cleveland. Played five seasons in the minors. He was a pitcher. Okay. 37, 37 and 32, 4.13 ERA. Yeah, he's all right. Decent yeah, so minor he's, league career, I guess. Yeah. So and and there's lots of those guys, right? So. Yeah. Okay, What's Dustin. Um, before we wrap this up, I have one question for you, and and I don't want to know. I, I I like we can talk about you know what should happen or whatever on another episode or what is by. By the time we record our next episode, is John Schneider going to be the manager of this team? Yeah, absolutely. You're like I said. Okay. I think I. Yeah, I think that I think that the decisions that were made were a team group decision, and I don't think he's gonna. I don't think they're gonna make him wear it. At least I. I if they do, man, that would be a shit move for them to do. Well. You know what? When you put it that way, I would have to agree. All right. Well, let's not let's not get into uh, you know John Schneider Gate. Uh, <laughs> like you know, everybody seems to be raging about John Schneider. Um, I don't know if this was you know a group think uh, decision in terms of that one. Then yeah, they probably all got to wear it. So we can all throw rotten vegetables at them when we see them in the streets. Yeah. Eh, All right. I'll be there with my tomatoes. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining me, Dustin.